What's good, farmers? My name is Antonio, and you're watching just a small portion of this whole um, call, I guess, that I had with Terry. And the interview went on for over an hour, and, uh, and um, he shared a very interesting strategy with me. Uh, he, he told me he's 100% invested in uranium. He also shared some macro insights and, and some other stuff in it as well. So if you're interested in more, uh, you can watch and listen to that call on baby-investments.com. 100% for free, no login required, no nonsense whatsoever, and uh, the full interview doesn't even have ads on it. So you can watch it in the background, uh, watch it or listen to it in the background without any interruption. Again, on baby-investments.com, where, by the way, I also publish my example uranium portfolio, my uranium watch list that I update quite often. Um, I, I, I publish some uranium and nuclear news and then press releases from the companies that I'm watching. And also some of my own thoughts and also the, the, the content that I consume on the daily. So, you know, uranium articles, uranium videos that I'm watching. It's sort of like the, the stock market uh, with a focus on uranium, silver, and gold through the eyes of an inexperienced investor who's, uh, who's trying to get better and learn how to do this whole stock market thing on, on, on my own. And uh, yeah, with that said, though, you know, enough self-promotion. You're so sick and tired of it. I'm being too greedy, I know. Let's see what Terry had to say for these 25-plus uh, uranium stocks. So I'm thinking for this next part, I want to give you like um, a couple of uranium names. Some of them I own, some of them I, I, I'm merely watching. And I'd like to have you like your quick, maybe like a one-liner opinion on them. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll just, just go ahead and if, open up If my I watch. can comment, I will. Okay, yeah. Don't worry about that. I'll just go ahead and open up my watch list, which is, by the way, up on my website, a quick and a shameless plug over here. And then I'll just read off there and see. Uh, well, I know a couple of names on there, so maybe we can start already while I'm opening it up. I'm thinking about the big names first. Uh, what do you think about Gazadam Prom? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's the, I, to, to me, there are two blue chip names in, in uranium, uh, and that's Cameco and Kazathon Prom. And uh, if I, you know, I, I think that it's, it's, it's going to be the biggest player. It's going to make money. Uh, so I, I think it's a great name to own. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Am I pronouncing this correctly? Gazatum Prom or is it Gazatum Prom? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah, but you said, uh, you said Cameco, you said, uh, you know, a big name. So I don't have to ask him that one. What about the other big name, China General Nuclear? That's a that's a that's a good name to own as well. Uh, they're diversified, uh, so you know it's not my strategy as, I, as I've explained to you. But uh, it's it's a good name, and Rick Rule has has talked about that company as well. So you know I have faith in what he says. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and the physical names like Yellow Cake and Uranium Participation Corp. Yeah, I do not own those those two uh, those two funds, but they are both well run. Uh, I think that Uranium Participation Corp right now with the transition that's going to occur with to, to, to Sprott, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, I think that's going to be an outstanding play. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. One of, the, one of the companies that I really like is UR Energy. What do you think about them? I think they're very well positioned. Uh, the CEO is a smart guy. He's been very careful in, in uh, trying to manage uh, not to dilute the stock too much. He's said it on many occasions. He's a major shareholder, and he wants to look after his investment. Absolutely. Jeff Glenda, is, he's awesome. You know, I talked to him off mic as well. Amazing gentleman, seriously. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, what I have next, um, energy fuels. I think that uh, while they're, they're, the, they're the biggest name in, in uranium in the, in the United States, uh, they own uh, the White Mesa Mill, which is a, a, a very good asset for them. Uh, and the way that they've managed to sort of uh, diversify their, their company, um, you know, going into the rare earths play right now, I think that's going to be major for them. And once, uh, once contracting begins again, and the price of uranium uh, increases to a point where uh, they can start signing long-term contracts, I think they're going to do very well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you told me you don't, you're not specialized in, you know, outside of Canada, but I guess this one you're going to know, uh, Bannerman Resources. Yeah. I think that uh, uh, Brandon Monroe is, is one of uranium, uh, the uranium sector's smartest guys. He's uh, very well spoken. I, I think that his involvement with the company is uh, is 
instrumental. I think that they're going to, they're probably going to be able to enter into production and sign contracts in the next cycle. So I, I think it's one of the quality names. Mm-hmm. Brandon Monroe, again, another uh, gentleman that I, that I've spoken to in the past. He's always so well prepared. Like he cares so much. Uh, he really prepares very well. And I like him for that. Um, and he's involved as well. Like he's involved with the World Nuclear Association. They come up with a report on the supply and demand related to uh, uranium every two years. So this September, uh, the report should come out. And he's on the committee that uh, that helps to prepare that report. So he's very well connected and uh, has uh, always up to date information, quality information to provide. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, we just talked about UR Energy, and people are going to get pissed off if I don't ask you about Peninsula. So, uh, yeah, Peninsula, what do you think? I, I can't comment too much on Peninsula because uh, it, it's not a company that I've, I've I don't have a position in Peninsula, so I, I I can't comment. Okay, yeah, no worries about that. Another public's favorite then, uh, Denison Mines. Uh, Denison Mines, I used to be have a position in Denison. I think that David Cates and the team there have done an outstanding job with that company. Last year, um, I remember someone on Twitter talked about, you know, who's going to produce in the next cycle, and they were, you know, probably in, in probably March or April last year. And uh, I've been to, um, I've been to PDAC, which is an event in Toronto. And, and I've met David Cates personally, and I've spoken to him. And what they've done with Denison Mines uh, with the in situ leaching. So they're, they're trying to bring this technology. It's called in situ leaching. And they want to, they're trying to use this technology on, on their uh, Phoenix deposit and uh, so they, they've tested that technology and, and it seems to be working. So, which is, and this is a game changer in the Athabasca Basin. And if they can do that, so, you know, if you, I think that Denison is, is a very high quality uranium name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that. A lot of respect for David Cates. Yes. And his yeah. team. Yep. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. It's an awesome team. It's not for nothing that the public really loves it, especially on Twitter. So well, what I wanted to say regarding Twitter is that, you know, people were speculating who's going to be, enter into production in the next cycle. And Denison was not mentioned. And I tweeted Denison and somebody said, Denison, like, there's no way Denison's going to, you know. And I said, well, I was speaking to David Cates personally. And, um, you know, uh, I, I think they will. So I think they've got a very good chance of uh, entering into production in this cycle. Nice. Nice. I'd love to see that. Um Here's another company that's put off production for too long, uh, GoVX. Yeah, GoVX is, uh, you know, <clears throat> they're in Niger. Uh, they are hoping to enter into production. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, I think that uh, it's undervalued right now. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, they have, they're, they're, a, they're a quality name in the uranium sector. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. One of my favorite speculations out there right now is uh, forces. Do you have an opinion on them? I do not. I, I have not done enough work on that company, so I, I unfortunately I, I I don't want to comment. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I really wanted to have you anyway. Maybe next time. What about fission? Then another one with an F. Fission has a uh, has a a great deposit. It's a shallow deposit. Um, they, they, I would, I would say that they're an undervalued compared to uh, NextGen, for example. Um, uh, their their deposit is smaller, although it's still open. Uh, they are, you know, they drilled this uh, this winter, and they have found that the deposit is open. Um, so it it could be, you know, larger than what they've uh, they've announced. Um, it's, it's undervalued for some reason. Um, uh, at some point in time, they will become a producer. Um, I'm not sure if they'll be able to do it in this cycle, but um, it's a quality, quality deposit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. You just said that they're cheaper than next gen, but what about next gen? A lot of people are saying that next gen is a must own name. Do you share that opinion? Next gen has uh, the arrow deposit. Uh, it's, it's one of the, you know, 
one of the world's undeveloped deposits of any commodity that shows extremely high potential. They're, they're doing a phenomenal work there. Uh, that, that deposit is going to generate a lot of money for that company. And uh, yes, I do believe that NextGen is a, is a must-own name. Nice. Strong again. Um, staying around them, I guess, what do you think about UEX? Um, I, I have no position. Uh, so I, I, would, I don't want to comment on UEX. Okay. Yeah, you told me you didn't want to comment too much on Australian companies as well. But there's a company they recently put out, um, I guess, a re report or something. Uh, or uh, it was a, they, they were covered in, in Bloomberg. I'm looking at it on my website over here. Uh, that they're going to be Australia's next uranium producer and also one of the, one of the biggest ones over there after the you know BHP and the other one, the big one. Boss Resources, do you have an opinion on them? Uh, no, I believe, I believe what you've just said, uh, but because I don't hold a position in them, I, I just, I, I can't, you know, uh, comment on them. Okay. Yeah. Um, no worries about that. Um, I've got Global Atomic on here as well. Any opinion on them? Great company. Um, you know, they're working hard. They obtained their license to mine uh, in December. Uh, if, if things keep uh, aligning well for that company, they should be producing in the next cycle. Um, they've got a great second revenue with zinc and, uh, it's a quality name. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I like that second revenue. I, I, I was just attracted to it the minute that, uh, I guess deep value co introduced me to it. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great name as well. One of my best, the, my, my absolute best performers in my demo portfolio, actually, it, it, it became an F, uh, a 5X, I, I tweeted about it, is uh, Western Uranium and Vanadium Corporation. Any opinion on, on them? I used to have a position in that company. Um, I, I don't anymore. Um, one of the things that I was concerned about is the fact that they have problems with their permits and uh, they don't have a mill. Hopefully, they'll be able to work some sort of agreement with... Uh, Possibly energy fuels, uh, you know, George Glazier, the CEO seems confident they'll be, they'll be able to, uh, you know, they'll be able to uh, get into some sort of agreement. And I hope they do. Uh, so, but I don't have a position in that company. Okay. Yeah, he, the, George Glacier seems really confident on it. And uh, I've got a subscriber to the, um, you know, a person who supports me on Patreon, a uh, member of the private community. He's crazy about uh, Western uranium. He was actually kind of angry at me when I took some profits off the table, but it became a 5X way before I expected it. So I just took some, some profits off the table. Um, yeah, I've seen, I, I'm, I'm expecting the trend of changing uranium names to continue. And so we've got a company that recently changed their name to Elevate Uranium. They used to be called Marenica. Uh, any opinion on them? I, I have not done any research into that company, so I can't comment. Okay. What about Vimy Resources? I, again, it's a company that I've looked into, but because it's on, you know, it's in a, on the Australian Stock Exchange, I don't have a, you know, I, I, I can't comment on that. Okay. Yeah, no worries about that. Um, thinking about John Borshoff, of course, we've got um, his ex-company, I guess, Paladin or Paladin or whatever you want to call it. What do you think about them? Great company. Uh, they've, they've, got, they've got a mill. They're, they're, they're going to start up that mill once they can, uh, you know, and, uh, once they're going to start producing once they, they, they're able to write contracts. Uh, so, you know, a lot, that's uh, one of the, darlings of the industry because that's the the company that that had those outstanding results in the last bull market and people expect that company to do well uh, in the next uh, bull market so it's one of the darlings mm -hmm. what about his new venture deep yellow deep yellow um i have not done a lot of research in that company so i i can't comment okay yeah well, that about does it for my, um, you know, for, for my example portfolio. I wanted to go into some stocks that I don't own. And I guess we already mentioned a couple of them. But some of the smaller names, uh, we mentioned Baseload. Um, but just for the record, what do you think of Baseload? Well, uh, I think that the CEO, uh, James Sykes, has uh, a very well-established, um, you know, um, the word I'm looking for is uh, people know him as a very, uh, as a good geologist. 
He's, uh, he's had success uh, working on teams, other teams in the past that have found deposits. He, you know, I, I speak regularly with James and he, uh, you know, his goal in life is to find a billion pounds of uranium. <laughs> you know, that, that's what, he, he wants that more than anything else. So I think he's, he's extremely focused on trying to find uranium in the Athabasca Basin. As I mentioned uh, already, the, the, you know, that company that ticks almost all of, the, all of my boxes in terms of low share count, low market cap. So uh, I think that, you know, they, they should do very well. If they do, uh, they, they had a bit of couple snags uh, in, their, in their exploration that they were supposed to start in this winter. Um, if they can work those things out and if, if they could, uh, you know, just uh, have good news flow, I think it's a company that should do very well. Mm -hmm. I think you, you mentioned it before uh, at the beginning of the interview, but if somebody, somebody's only watching this part, what about standard uranium? I think that's one of your favorites, right? Well, yes, uh, standard uranium, um, the market cap, 20 million is their market cap. They've got 91 million, 92 million shares. John Bay is, is you know, running this company like uh, he's doing a great job as CEO. They've got a great sort of marketing and social media um, strategy in terms of, you know, the, they're, they're producing videos, they're on webcasts, they're on, you know, they're trying to get their name out there. They've got a good exploration team with Neil McCallum and Sean Hilliker. They've just hired more geologists. They've announced, you know, they, they're into their third drilling campaign, their third, you know, program. So they started last summer and they did a program this winter. Now they're in their third program, which is their summer drilling program. And, you know, they like what they saw in the winter drill program. So they decided to quadruple their summer drill program. So, you know, if they can find good results this summer that should you know help the company quite a bit but i mean they're just starting so uh you know they would continue to explore uh they have no difficulty raising money when they need to raise money uh low market cap relatively low share count i you know this is this is looking good to me if they do hit uranium it's, uh, it's going to be pretty nice. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the social media strategy, I'm loving it. I think uh, all of these companies should do that. I mean, some of these destinations in, in like Africa and, and Australia or whatever, like I cannot go there. A lot of people don't get to travel. So if you take people with you and you show them what you're doing with their money, I think that's genius. I think every company should be doing that, especially the drillers. And um. Yeah, what do I wanna, what am I forgetting? Uh, oh, Asencourt. Here's a company that almost nobody talks about. Right. So Asencourt, uh, I, I uh, didn't participate directly in Asencourt uh, because I own a position in in their in Sky Harbor. Sky Harbor, yeah. So so Asencourt is uh, exploring on uh, Sky Harbor's property right now, and Sky Harbor has an agreement with Asencourt. So if Asencourt does do well then uh sky harbor will benefit so i decided just to i didn't want to add more positions so i decided to just uh you know if they do well then i you know my positions in the sky harbor should do well yeah i guess they do own 75 percent of the of the claimed land right or i mean the, the rights to explore it or something like that something that i liked about them is that they've got all these neighbors so if if they find something they're gonna get bought up like just like that, I think. Well, that, that would probably be the case with any, you know, junior explorer that finds something like, for example, ISO energy, yeah. uh, they're, they're working on, they, they've got a deposit. They, we don't know the size of it yet, but the grades are tremendous. And this deposit is right on the border of Cameco's property. So it's, it, you know, it's, um, it's not unreasonable to believe that, you know, just on the other side of the border property, chemical, if they started exploring there, they would hit the same kind of deposit or the same, they would get the same results. So at some point in time, you know, uh, any company, junior, 
that hits a uranium deposit that's worth something. Not all deposits are, are equal. Uh, if it's a mineable deposit, um, then, you know, those companies would be bought out. So that could happen with Azincourt. It could happen with Standard. It could happen with any company that makes it a, makes a discovery. It could happen with Baselo if they make a discovery. Yeah. I like that a lot about these companies because um, some of them have cash. Like, for example, Azincourt last – because I've been looking into that company more seriously. I've actually reached out to them um, and um, – but, um, you know, they, they've got about $5 million in cash, $20 million in market cap. So what you're paying for the deposit is $15 million. And if I look back at the deals that were done last time at around the, the highs of the, of the market, there was not a deal for around $15 million. Like the deals were in, in the, the half a billion numbers. So then we're talking about, you know, 10, 20x potentially. So I, I like that potential as well. I'm yet to see how I'll implement that in my portfolio. You just mentioned, uh, mentioned ISO Energy. I wanted to ask about that, so that's good. Uh, another one is Can Alaska Holdings or Can Alaska Uranium, I guess. What do you think about them? Uh, I have a position. Uh, I, I, I think that they've been very good stewards of that company. They've managed to uh, survive the bear market by advancing different projects that also using the prospect generator model uh, they've, they've optioned off uh, a couple properties. They're also involved in nickel. Um, and uh, so now they've uh, appointed a new CEO, Corey Bellick. Uh, he has experience. He worked with chemical before. Uh, they have their uh, West MacArthur project where uh, they have hit uranium on that, on that project. Uh, now they just need to, to find where that mother load deposit is. And so that's another company that, uh, again, you know, they're one drill hole away from, you know, providing very um, exciting returns. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, uh, I'm almost running out of names here. Last one that I can think of or see over here is uh, Laramite Resources. Any opinion? Uh, yeah, I, I think they're they're well run. I used to have a position. I, I sold my position in that company, but. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good name. Okay. What am I forgetting here? Am I forgetting any companies that you wanted to talk about? Uh, we, we talked about uh, PurePoint. Uh, there's another interesting company that is called International Consolidated Uranium. Yeah. Uh, what they've done is they've, uh, their, their share count is very low. Uh, I, was, I was lucky enough to get in when their market cap was low. Uh, and uh, they've, They've, you know, I think they're six or seven X since when I got in, maybe 10 X. I can't, I'm not exactly sure, but they've, they've, they've done very well recently. Uh, they've sort of taken the model of like the Encore Energy sort of model in, in the United States, but mostly in Canada and other properties. So since they've uh, started operations, they, they, they've, um, they've, uh, they've been able to acquire projects. I think they've got five projects right now. Uh, they're actively trying to acquire other projects. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting model uh, that, uh, you know, has done fairly well. And like I said, I think they're outstanding. I think they have 33 million shares outstanding, which is nothing. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's an interesting name. Uh, another name out there is Fission 3.0. That's kind of a, a, a spin-off of Fission. So when Fission... Mm -hmm. When they made their triple R deposit, uh, they had a bunch of uh, properties. They wanted to focus mostly on developing the triple R. So they, uh, they, they spun off the properties into a new uh, company called Fission 3.0. Uh, although that company has been sort of inactive, uh, they have uh, eight or nine uh, interesting properties in the Athabasca Basin that were staked long ago. So they've got quality properties. And um, so hopefully at some point in time, that company will uh, do something with those properties and uh, maybe announce uh, that they're beginning to explore again. But they've managed to survive the 10 year long bear market. Uh, they were able to raise money to just keep the lights open during that time. Uh, as new and new companies want to enter the uranium market, they might approach a fission 3.0 Fission might option off certain other properties like we've seen Can Alaska do, like we've seen Sky Harbor do. So, uh, you know, they, uh, they, 
they're an interesting play as well. Mm-hmm. Their market cap now is about 18 million. Their, their shares outstanding are, are higher uh, than what I, I'd like to see, but uh, you know, they might come into play. It might, might be quite interesting in a year's time or two years time when, when this game really heats up. Nice. I really appreciate all your wisdom, all the opinion that you've given me. Um, but unfortunately I'm all out of questions. Is there something in general that I forgot to ask you that you really wanted to share with me today? I think that just, just, uh, you know, the macro story, how the fundamentals are just stacking in favor of this uranium, uh, you know, investment thesis. Uh, and uh, I know other people have talked about it, but it's worth mentioning again that I think that uh, the, the window of time to get into the uranium space, uh, it, you know, I don't think you're going to get a better window to get in than now, especially with the downturn that we've seen in the past two weeks. Um, because once uh, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust uh, enters the game and starts buying uranium, you know, maybe on a daily basis, then uh, it's going to drive the price of uranium up. It's going to light a fire under the utilities. It's going to, you know, spur contracting. It's going to really kick this this game into high gear. And uh, I think that that's, you know, like I said, I think you've got about from now to maybe end of July to get in, maybe August, and then it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I absolutely am. I feel confident on it as well. And uh, yeah, I think we had a great call. I really appreciate your time, and I'm hoping you enjoyed it at least half as I did, which would mean that you would like to come back, which I'm hoping you all. So, of course, uh, anytime. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. There you go. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you and I hope we speak soon. Thanks for having me. Thank you and take care.